Hello guys and welcome to this week's weekly vlog. Um, it's Monday, it is Monday night. I didn't film anything all day because I mostly thought um, I wasn't going to be able to because my building's been doing some roof work. Uh, yeah, I sure hope it does. <laughs> but basically I thought there's going to be loud noises all day and like we did have a couple loud-ish noises but nothing too major so like I was kind of just waiting for the major noises. Anyway, um, I think you're a little bit crooked. There you go. Um, anyway, it's all good. I think they're done stomping on the roof for the day because it's about five o'clock almost. So I thought I would sit down. Um, I'm in my big comfy knitted scarf. Someone asked if I knit this. I did not. My skills are not this good. Um, my grandma gave this to me actually. I believe either one of her friends or someone she knows created it. So not I. Someone with much more skill than me. But it is very comfy and it is handmade. So yes. Um, and then I'm wearing my adopt a pet sweater that I've had since the third or fourth grade. The sleeves, as you can see, I don't know if you can see, they are. <laughs> My arms grew a little bit since I was eight years old, but apparently not very much. So yeah, I just, I can't throw it out. I really love it. It's my favorite color. And even though the sleeves are very um, too short, that's okay. And it's just been with me for forever. This is like my oldest piece of clothing. And like, it's just so cool that I can be like, this is my sweater from the third grade. Anyway, I'm gonna finish Tolstoy this week if it kills me. I vow to finish childhood, boyhood, youth. I'm gonna read a little bit more of this tonight. I always end up kind of pushing my reading of Tolstoy to the evening time. I don't know why it just kind of happens that way. And I'm still reading The Girl Who Drank the Moon by Kelly Barnhill. I've been reading it so slowly because I'm just kind of like savoring it. Guys, it's so good. I think it's going to be my first five-star read of the year, which is so exciting. I was worried I wasn't going to have any in January, but um, I think it's going to be The Girl Who Drank the Moon because the writing is just like I want to like drool because it's so good. We're following this witch named Zan and um in the protector at the little town that has like these crazy rules and everyone's very um kind of fanatic about their rulers and stuff like that every year they sacrifice a child to the witch in the woods um because they think they have to in order to keep where they live safe so zan is that witch and the child she gets um she accidentally feeds the child moonlight and if you drink moonlight or consume moonlight you become in magic and so luna the little girl who zan decides to keep she becomes magic and she has this power and it's insane because moon power or power given to you by the moon is like very limitless and hard to control so then you follow zan the witch Therian, a little baby, he's not a baby, but he's a very tiny dragon, and Glurk, who is a very ancient swamp monster, and they raise this baby, and it is so cute, so wholesome, so wholesome, um, and I just, it's, it's really, really, really good, so if you're looking for something soft and sweet and carefree, but with gloriously beautiful writing, the girl who drank the moon might be the one for you, so, um, yeah. These two things are all I'm reading right now. I uh, definitely want to work something else in here this week, and then I'm really excited. I think this week, if I finish this, I'm going to pick up something else. Yeah, pick something else off my bookshelf, or either start February's book for Dickens, or start February's book for the DA. So, stay tuned. I feel like I have to do tree updates now, but a few of his- a few of Nori's ugh, pine needles just came off of my hand, and- ugh, sorry. There's a sliver in my middle finger. I don't want to give you the middle finger, but now there's like a sliver. Can you see? <gasps> you can, look at it. I'm trying to save your life. And this is how you repay me.
so I'm currently outside filming on my balcony. Um, I was getting some shots for a little project I'm working on and it's snowing at the minute really softly and lightly and it's actually really, really nice out. I definitely want to go for a walk soon. So I'm going to finish up with these shots and then I don't know. I don't know. I'm just so happy the sun's out. Hi guys. <laughs> Hi. Oh my gosh. It feels so good to sit down and turn on the camera. Um, the lighting is beautiful today. There's like really sparkly snow like floating down um, onto my balcony and I have the door all wide open so if you can hear noise from the outside world. Um, I hope maybe it's just nice ambience. So I just really wanted to sit down because all week I haven't been able to talk to you guys. Um, I think we talked on Monday and then basically all day, even today, all week actually, they've been doing work in the building, plumbing and roof work and it's been crazy loud. I think they have a little break now so if they start up again, um, we'll have to stop talking because it is so loud. I haven't been able to do any filming this week which is sad but I've been so busy, <laughs> so busy recently. Um, so I just thought we could sit down and have a chat and um, yeah, how are you? How have you been doing? I would really honestly love to know. I hope you're doing good. I hope you're doing well. <laughs> um, yeah, I have been really busy with a lot of YouTube stuff. I have some really exciting things coming in the future soon, hopefully. Um, and I've just, I don't know, I've just been feeling so happy and so um, excited to have this channel and to do a lot of things with it and yeah, I've been filming a lot of videos, I've been trying to get out a lot of videos and it's just been such a good thing this month. Um, I am, thankfully now, I don't think you can see them but they're like right over here, amassing computer parts. They've started to arrive because you guys know my laptop over here does not edit my videos anymore. Basically the last, I think, I don't know how many videos it's been, like four or five have been edited on my roommate's computer. Thank goodness they have been letting me use their computer to edit, otherwise I would not have been able to upload. Um, I think it's been like, I don't know how many weeks it's been, but I've been using their computer and it's just been the absolute biggest lifesaver. Um, I'm so lucky and so grateful that they've been letting me do that. So thankfully though, very soon, I will no longer have to do that because my parts are coming in and I'm just really excited to film. Update on Nori. Actually, let me grab him. He is honestly not doing that well, I don't think. Um, parts of the, the leaves are, the leaves, I keep saying leaves. The needles are so dry and like I keep watering him, but like when I did find him in the forest, in the trash, like parts of it were already turning yellow and stuff. So I just don't know if he's gonna make it. I really hope so. And also when I found him, like, I don't think you can see, but in his, oh, you can see the yellow actually, yeah. Um, his soil, half of it is scooped out and it literally looks like a squirrel or some animal. Um, dug out half of his soil in his pot so i just i really hope he makes it i just i don't know i'm trying my best guys i'm trying my best my grandma said i should talk to him <laughs> and love him and that will help so that's what i've been trying to do i am this close to finishing the girl who drank the moon by kelly barnhill you guys it is fabulous it is incredible i'm gonna cry it's gotta be my first five star read of the year. It's gonna be. I have a little over two hours left on that. I have been, I don't know, I've just been so busy that I haven't really been listening a lot to audiobooks recently, which is exciting because I love listening to audiobooks, but I just, I found myself with so many things to do. Kelly Barnhill's writing reminds me a little bit of Neil Gaiman's writing, but honestly is a little bit better in my opinion. Her way with words is magic. The characters she's created in here, magic. The way that she's built up this like bog world where a lot of the story takes place is fantastic. It's fantastic. Um, so I'm almost done that. And then I'm literally almost done Tolstoy. I said I was gonna finish it this week and I am. 
I think I have a little under 40 pages left. So doable, I'm gonna do it. And then I'm gonna sit down and take all my notes on the book. So that's everything I'm reading right now. I'm gonna be starting some more books this week. And um, yeah, right now I have a lot of stuff to do because I have some emails to answer. Oh, I wanted to tell you guys. I wanted to tell you guys that I filmed um, an ASMR video. I currently have one filmed. And I think what I'm gonna do, I was gonna ask, but I think I'm just gonna do it. I'm gonna start a separate channel for ASMR videos because I know and totally understand that not everyone likes ASMR and not everyone wants to listen to ASMR and I don't wanna flood this channel with kind of separate content that would probably be better having its own isolated channel. I don't know what I'm gonna call it yet. I think I'm gonna be filming I don't know if like the noise gets better tonight, I'll film another one tonight, but if there are any ASMR videos you would like to see, let me know. If you would like a separate ASMR channel for me, let me know again. <laughs> um, I'm really nervous about it because it's not something I've ever done before really. So yeah, that's what I've been working on this week as well, but I'm gonna stop talking and I'm gonna go get some stuff done. <laughs> welcome back um i think this is actually gonna be a two-week vlog i'm starting a new week um, but i think you've already seen a few clips from last week so yeah i'm really grateful this morning because i just got off a whole weekend having a really bad migraine the whole weekend basically all of saturday uh friday night into all of saturday and then like kind of sunday as well it was definitely less painful on sunday but all week with my head it just someone was taking an ice pick to my head it was really bad um so i'm feeling extremely grateful today to not have a headache anymore i'm also really excited because i'm going to be starting the pickwick papers look at this color coordination with rilke um the pickwick papers by charles dickens today because this is now the dickens versus tolstoy read of february and march we had a lot of you guys request that we take um two months to read this one and we took that to heart, we agreed, so we've pushed the Pickwick Papers to be our read for February and March, and I'm really excited about it. It's a whopping 719 pages, and I'm going to be trying to read about, I think, 12 pages a day, because then uh, that'll get me done in that time frame, so I'm really excited to start this today. I'm also going to be starting Julius Caesar, which is our Dark Academics book of the month, and... Yeah, right now it is around 2.40 because I filmed my January wrap-up. I just got done filming that and it took me an hour and a half. I talked for an hour and a half. I cannot believe I've done this, but um, yeah. So I'm going to try and edit that and I'm going to go for a walk right now because it's sprinkling a little bit of snow, a little dusting, and that is the plan. <laughs>
Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Tuesday. This is going to be a very busy week. Um, so I don't know how much I'm going to be able to film, but at the minute, I'm just sitting and working on my Tolstoy notes for childhood, boyhood, youth, because we have the debate on Saturday, February 6th, on Carolyn's channel over at Carolyn Murray Reads. So I'm just trying to get like my notes, my points, everything in order, um, just so I know what I'm talking about. So basically, uh, just to explain for a second, I'm going through every single tab in here um, and then basically picking out the parts that I found mistakes or personal uh, problems with the book or just as a reader things that I don't find particularly enjoyable, readable, strong points, whatever you'd like to call them. And then I'm also trying to pick out the parts that I did love and that I know Carolyn will be arguing about and then trying to find out if um, I can refute any of those arguments without lying or without putting my own personal opinion of this book, which is that it's great um, at fault because there are some really strong parts about Tolstoy and um, some really weak ones, at least in his first novel. So that's what I'm doing right now. But yeah, this week is going to be really busy. I'm also working on another project at the same time, so I'm going to be switching back and forth between the Tolstoy business and um, the other project. I'll give you a hint. Um, that's as much of a hint as you get, I guess. I'll probably be able to talk about it more later. Um, but yeah, so that is the plan for today. I also need to edit my very extremely long January, no, yes, January, January wrap up that I filmed yesterday because I'm trying to get it out tomorrow. I don't know if that's going to happen because like I said, I have an hour and a half of raw footage. What is my problem? Um, so yeah, very busy day, but let's get down to business. To defeat the hunt. Okay. Alright, so I really don't want to stop working on um, this project, but my brain needs a little break, so I think what I'm going to do is tidy up, um, maybe do like a little bit of stretching or meditation, I'm not too sure yet. I also want to listen a lot more to my audiobook, Aurora Rising by Jay Kristoff and Amy Kaufman. I'm really, really liking it. I'm almost done. Um, I do have to say it is very similar <laughs> to the Illuminae Files, um, and I would still say the Illuminae Files is a lot better than Aurora Rising, um, but I'm still really enjoying it. So I'll speak more about that in probably a few minutes too. 
so yeah i'm just gonna go tidy up a little bit just think more about this because i literally feel like like i just feel really happy working on this i feel like i'm doing um what i love and i'm just really really getting so into it and i don't want to stop writing um but we're gonna need to take a break so that's what we're gonna do Feels like negative 20 today. I think this was a mistake. I feel like I'm in Antarctica. Like it is so cold. So cold. I think it's the coldest day of the year. morning i haven't really vlogged in a while because i've been really busy and not feeling super well the week that i was meant to be vlogging so i'm back now um i have a lot of things to update you guys on i have my coffee it is tuesday february 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 um the 9th or something like that we have a lot of construction going on once again it's kind of been for the past two months anyway we're just gonna pretend it's not there today because i really need to film some videos so i have a lot of reading updates and as you can see behind me maybe i am trying to reorganize my bookshelf and find room for things so all right we've got we've got out of the pajamas we escaped the pajamas today <laughs> I wanted to show you guys and thank you guys as well because I got a lot of really, really beautiful, wonderful stuff in my P.O. box um, the last time I checked and I just want to say thank you so much. I did just want to say a huge thank you and show you guys some of the stuff that came because I'm just so blown away, literally so blown away. Um, I'm going to hang this little piece. I love this so much. This is so cute. This is from Jerry. Thank you so much. This is so cute. This is going to go up on my wall as well with all of you guys' artwork. I love that it's like very slowly being filled up by artwork from you guys. I think this is from a wonderful lady named Judith. Thank you so much. Um, it is a music box. And if you may have guessed, let me show you. Um, yeah, so that is a Phantom of the Opera music box. Thank you so much. Um, I opened it and I was like, what? What is this? And then obviously there's a, there's a tourney key on the back and... Thank you so much. Um, this, I just sit here and like cry. <laughs> that is so thoughtful and so perfect. Thank you so much, Judith. Um, you guys are incredible. Just seriously thank you so much so this is definitely gonna go on i want to dedicate one whole full big shelf now it's a phantom of the opera because i have enough 
books i think finally and i have other things you guys have made me i have art i now have this music box um i have my my playbills and like the what, what are they called you know the things you get when you go to musicals not the menu it's not a menu it's not a brochure really um but you guys know what i'm talking about and yeah just seriously thank you guys so so much so now what i'm gonna spend my morning doing i think i'm gonna answer a couple emails and then i'm gonna um clean up and try to fix my bookshelves which i'm really really excited about and then i'm going to organize oh, i'm eating my hair this morning i'm gonna organize and try and get all of my wall art in order so i can put it all up there so yeah <laughs> All right, so as you can see, because I built my computer, um, I had to rearrange my desk, take off the top part. Um, it's not done yet, I only just started this last night, but I decided to just for right now put my lamp here, and then this is like my YouTube <laughs> book. These are some of my YouTube books, and then these are more like personal journals, and obviously I have my little cat mug with some pens and pencils, and then I used to have on my desk like my currently reading stack or um, my like little row of books that I wanted to read for the month. So right now I am currently reading the Pickwick Papers by Dickens because this is um, the Dickens versus Tolstoy pick. <laughs> this is Charles Dickens' first novel and we're going to be reading it during February and March. So I am now... 12 pages through um but there's so much in it that's so interesting and um yeah i think it's gonna be really cool and then i'm also reading julius caesar because this is the dark academics pick for february i'm absolutely loving this i think this could be my favorite shakespeare play of all time um i am adoring it so much so those are those two books i have a few audiobooks on the go and I would like, I think, right now, <laughs> what I'm gonna do is pick a few more books off my bookshelf to add to the stack to read this month. So let's do it. Yeah, so I started Pickwick Papers um, a couple days ago and I read through the introduction. There will be a full vlog coming about this big book, similar to what I did with Childhood Boyhood Youth by Tolstoy. So um, keep your eye out for that, it'll be coming like probably at the end of March so yeah I'm really really excited for this I am really liking it although I think it's gonna be quite the long journey but Julius Caesar I am it's so good I'm gonna read you guys some of my favorite quotes in a second and I'm also listening to the year of the hair which is a piece of Finnish literature I believe it was published 1975 it is by Arto Pasolina Arto Pasolina I hope I'm saying that right um, I'm really liking it. It's basically about this guy who's a journalist and on a trip um, to take pictures in, you know, the countryside, his car accidentally hits a hare and injures it, breaks his leg, and our guy, Vatanen, gets out of the car and rescues the hare and then decides that um, he's going to quit his job, leave his wife, and travel the Finnish country um, all over. And it's basically about reclaiming our place with nature, and it's just it's really really good i'm loving it it's kind of just a wild ride honestly and a lot of really bizarre strange things happen but that is the audiobook that i'm listening to as well
Good morning. It is February 10th. Um, it's Wednesday. We're starting off early on a walk. It's not really that early. I think it's noon. <laughs> um, but I have a lot to do today. Mainly editing some videos. It's also very cold. I think it's negative 14 right now and then probably feels colder. But it's really a beautiful day. I don't feel too cold. I was out filming some video clips for a video that I'm working on and that's just been really fun. So yeah, it is gorgeous. I'm a little cold, but I'm just so happy. It's been so nice and sunny for a while. So yeah, um, I read a bit more of the Pickwick papers last night. I have, I have my eyes open for coyotes. I really want to see, I really want to see a coyote, not like up close, but you know, from a safe distance. Um, and deer, I saw two herds of deer actually, two different herds of deer um, a couple days ago. And of course you would have seen the turkeys, um, the footage of the turkeys. So that was fun too. Um, yeah, usually they're out here, but I think with the deer, like, I'm way too late now because they they would have gone by now, but maybe the turkeys, although it's so cold, it's so cold. Anyway, I'm gonna stop talking because my hand that's holding the camera is freezing to death, so I will enjoy the rest of my walk and talk to you when I am back in. Okay, good evening, guys. Um, it is now, I don't even know what time it is. If I had to guess, I'd say, like, around... 7 30 or something maybe but um you really didn't miss much i didn't really film anything else today well i did but not not for this vlog um i basically came back from my walk i did some admin stuff i edited finished editing actually my snow day vlog which i will leave up in the cards because that'll be out first so if you'd like to go check it out it's just a very cozy um, snow day here. It's just all one day filled with snow. I think the snowiest day of the year. I'm so glad that I got it on camera and that I have that memory. Um, so yes, I, I really like how it turned out. So I'll, I'll, be, I'll leave it up there. And then for dinner, I had some veg, some vegetables, noodles, and tofu, which is really good. And I had a nap. I listened to a little bit of ASMR. <laughs> um, and about five minutes ago, I sat down and read a bit more of Julius Caesar. Um, I've been reading about five to six pages of this a day because it's a really, really short, uh, nice and short play. And um, yeah, it's been extremely drafty and cold in here <laughs> all day, um, all week. It's been like really, I'm like, yeah, I've got layers on. It's really cold in here. But um, I thought I would talk about everything that I'm reading because at the minute I'm reading so much stuff. I'm reading so much that I had to grab my laptop and pull up my Goodreads because I don't want to forget anything. Um, as well, I thought right now we could just do a chat and like do not really a Q&A because I'm working on editing my Q&A um, that I filmed over the weekend, but I've been getting a lot of DMs and my DMs on Instagram are so full. I have hundreds and hundreds of them and I just, I can't I can't get to them all, especially because it's so hard for me to read text on a screen. So um, if you've sent me something and I haven't answered, I'm so sorry. I would love to answer, like really, really I would. Um, and like I do, and I can get to a few for sure. So um, if you did get a response from me, I'm really glad, but the majority of the majority of them I'm not able to answer at the minute which um, I wish I was I wish I was so I thought I would answer some of the questions that were in my DMs just broadly here so I can at least um, vocalize them somewhere for you guys so I thought that's what we do as well but let's just start with some reading updates okay so first let's talk um, Julius Caesar loving it. I think I said this could be my new favorite Shakespeare play and I still feel that way. As you can see, I've got a few tabs. Um, just really looking out for my favorite lines or stuff that I want to share during the live show, but I thought I would read you some um, just right now because, wow, we know, we know this man can write, but <laughs> um, it just, it's so beautiful, especially um, it's just so tragic. I don't know why I'm already feeling like so much emotion from this play, but especially so much 
um, for Brutus and the fall of Brutus, I guess, um, if you want to call it that. So this one says, um, Cassius is like, Brutus, why don't you like me? And Brutus is like, um, but let not therefore my good friends be grieved among which number Cassius be you one, nor construe any further my neglect than that poor Brutus with himself at war forgets the shows of love to other men. Um, and then Cassius says, tell me good Brutus, can you see your face? And Brutus says, no Cassius, for the eye sees not itself, but by reflection from some other thing. And their whole conversation is just so chilling um, because Cassius is kind of like the snake. He's kind of like the snake in the Garden of Eden and he's trying to get Brutus to be something that he's not and to feel these emotions and do these things that he's not. Um, and that is start to harbor these violent emotions and misgivings and against Caesar, against Caesar. So Brutus says, into what dangers would you lead me, Cassius, that you would have me seek into myself for that which is not in me. And Cassius says, and since you know you cannot see yourself so well as by reflection, I, your glass, will modestly discover to yourself that of yourself, which you yet know not of. It's just so good. Um, in scene three of act one as well, Casca, who is another Roman, has a really nice speech and he says, he's talking to Cicero, who's just run in. Are not you moved when all the sway of earth shakes like a thing unfirm? O Cicero, I have seen tempests when the scolding winds have rived the knotty oaks, and I have seen the ambitious ocean swell and rage and foam to be exalted with the threatening clouds, but never till tonight, never till now, did I go through a tempest dropping fire. Either there is a civil strife in heaven, or else the world, too saucy with the gods, incenses them to send destruction. Yep. So I am absolutely and completely and 100% adoring this. It's so good. Like I said, I think I think it could be my new favorite play. So um, I did manage to finish up chapter two of the Pickwick Papers today. I was actually filming mostly today for my Charles Dickens vlog, a whole vlog on the Pickwick Papers. So yeah, um, I'm enjoying it. I'm not sure how this one's going to go though. I think I have some premonitions and a few slight misgivings, but we're going to keep checking on and there's been so much that I'm loving. I mean, look at all this. Of course, I'm still going to love it, but that is the Pickwick Papers as well. I don't speak on it too much in these vlogs because for the Dickens um, versus Tolstoy thing, uh, Carolyn and I are doing like whole dedicated reading vlogs to it. So, okay, now let me pull up my... Oh, Goodreads, don't crash on me. Okay, so I finished The Year of the Hair by Arto Pasolina um, yesterday. Did I finish it yesterday? Yeah, I enjoyed it. I gave it 3.75 stars, I think. There's a lot in it that I enjoy a lot more like having read rather than the process of reading because it's a book that jumps around so much. I think I said that it's about a guy who hits a rabbit, um, save the saves the rabbit and then treks all over Finland with this hair, um, basically reconnecting with nature and um, getting away from the city and everything like that. It, it was like my ideal life, <laughs> just wandering around with this rabbit. I have so many detailed thoughts to, to say about it um, in my wrap up, so that will be coming at the end of the month, but um, yeah, I really, really liked it and I would love to, to do what batten and did because I just anyway so so good um what else am I reading at the minutes um I started let us compare mythologies by Leonard Cohen uh which is a book of poetry if you don't know uh Leonard Cohen he is a Canadian singer songwriter writer um poet I suppose you could say and let us compare mythologies is a collection of his poetry that he wrote when he was so young between the ages of 15 to 22 um I'm not very far through that one I'm listening to that one on audible and I am I think on the fourth or fifth poem so far it's been filled with a lot of um 
Christian imagery and images of Christianity, exploration of Christianity through poems and stuff like that. There's also been a bit about Greek mythology because I think like the premise or like what connects a lot of these poems, if I can maybe read it for a second, is Leonard Cohen like as a very young person, like in his teens and early 20s, um, reflecting on and examining and learning for himself for like the first time in his life, like the mythologies that inform the Western world and Western religion and his own life, like what it's been built upon. And the classics play such a huge role in that. So um, yeah, it was released in 1956. Yeah, so I'm really interested to see um, what it's like. I've never read anything else by Leonard Cohen. I know he I think he passed away a few years ago actually but um yeah that should be interesting i don't particularly um prefer or like enjoy the experience of listening to poetry because it's a lot harder to um like get a grasp on for for me personally so i'm also listening to np the book is just called like the initials np by banana yoshimoto um really good so far this one ooh, this i think this one's gonna be so good but it's like really dark as well um and really heavy and i'm only about an hour through it's a really really short book if anyone is looking to get into it we're following this girl and the novel begins with her she's 18 and she's in a relationship with um a professor who is 18, 18 or 17 years her senior and he is trying to translate um, a short story from a Japanese author and this author lived in the States for a very long time in the United States. He wrote a lot in English and so the professor is trying to translate this 98th short story in this book of short stories by the Japanese author who's writing in English so the professor is trying to translate the English stories into Japanese. However, the author, the Japanese author of these short stories, um, committed suicide um, a bit before this book begins, I think. And since then, I think there's been two or three other translators who have tried to translate this 98th short story into Japanese for Japan, for Japanese people. And those two or three people have also committed suicide. Um, and so the novel begins with our protagonist and... Um, trying to talk to the, the man she's in a relationship with about this 98th short story. There's also a lot about language and like the futileness of language, which I think ultimately is what this book is going to be about. Like I'm just guessing because I'm not very far through, but um, our protagonist also had a pretty long period in her life as well when she was younger. After her parents divorced, um, she stopped talking for a really long time and she kind of tells us about her experience without a voice without being able to talk whatever the reason like the doctors would just yell at her that it was psychosomatic um, but she couldn't talk regardless of what was causing it so um she kind of relates to us how not having a voice changes the thoughts in your head and how ultimately not using language like really breaks it down to the point that she experiences the world through colors instead of through language and then she gets a glimpse of how useless language is at conveying what we mean and what we actually try to say to each other um and so for example if her mom was talking to her she would experience like tenderness in gold or her sister's um, laughter in pink or like petting a cat as orange um, and it's just like a different way of experiencing the world rather than using faulty language that like slips away from you as soon as you try to express whatever you're trying to say even though we all try to do it anyway which is why i love language and i hate language um but yeah i absolutely love that topic explored in literature and the way that i think or like the way that it probably already has it's very subtle as well i think that will slide into the discussion about translating and how difficult a task it is to translate futile language use language which is futile to translate it into another futile language um i think that's really interesting and probably ties in a lot to the mystery um 
And yeah, I'm not really sure what the 98th short story is about yet, but we're following this girl as she is now um, forming a relationship with the dead author's son and daughter who are back in Japan. So I'm also reading The Year of the Witching by Alexis Henderson. I think this was a fairly recent release. This is a fantasy book, a really dark fantasy book about a young woman named Emmanuel living in a rigid puritanical society. Um, so she lives in this town called Bethel, which is very much like a Puritan village, and it's ruled over by this man called the Prophet, um, and he basically upholds the law. It's an extremely religious landscape, um, and her mother is dead, so she lives with some other people, but it's like her existence is basically blasphemy because of... I think the man her mother had her with or something like that once again not very far through any of these books but um yeah it's really dark i don't know if i like reading too much about these like very concentrated puritanical um societies and stuff because it's it's just really hard to read about sometimes but um i know that it's a lot about witchcraft as well which obviously slides into the whole puritan thing and like um yeah, like witch trials and stuff like that, but yeah, so I'm just at the part now where she's been lured into the dark wood, which is like the surrounding dark um, forest around Bethel, and some bad things are happening to her, so um, yeah, when was this released? Oh yeah, okay, it came out July 2020, so, so yeah, um, I also know some book mail is coming tomorrow, I think, um, and then I think another package is supposed to arrive today or something like that um so i'm gonna have to film a book haul really soon but i'm gonna be starting one of the books that i ordered really really soon i want to read it in february for sure another one i'm looking forward to in february is deadly dreams by kj sutton because the audiobook is being released tomorrow <sighs> um just in time for like fantasy romance february but um oh i dnf'd the bridge kingdom talking about fantasy romance i guess this is just gonna be a really chatty night because i don't have anything else to do don't have anywhere to go um but yeah i dnf the bridge kingdom i really wanted to have another fantasy romance this month but um i've heard so much about the bridge kingdom danelle jensen janelle denson they both sound kind of right um <laughs> one of those I think one of those two or it's just something completely different but this was about a kingdom the bridge <laughs> and this girl named Laura who is from um the kingdom parallel to the bridge kingdom and then she is sent to be the queen to marry like the king of the bridge kingdom um and her kingdom Maradrina hates the bridge kingdom because the bridge kingdom has the bridge. Therefore, they have taxes and duties. So yeah, it's just really not good for her kingdom. So she's actually on a mission to kill him. Um, yeah, and take his kingdom down, basically. Um, I just didn't think this was well done at all. And my goal, one of my other reading goals this year is to just don't read what I don't want to read. Um, I have this tendency to stick things out and like um, not give up and like not want to abandon something I've started, even something as trivial as like a book you could argue. But this year I just really want to focus my time and energy on enjoying really what I'm reading, like enjoying everything. Um, or hating something but for a good purpose. I just don't think the bridge kingdom was going to be worth my time because the the writing wasn't great, the plot structure and like the po the politics world building and everything like that was really really weak um, and not very good in my opinion and the romance was just really not turned up the notch that I wanted, you know, it wasn't like the dial setting that I wanted um, on the dryer, you know. I gave up and I quit. Sometimes uh, quitting is an achievement, so. I DNF that. <laughs> um, okay, someone asked, have you read Les Mis? Um, nope, I have not read Les Mis. Um, someone asked about the Dickens versus Tolstoy debate. It is um, on, the live show is on Carolyn's channel. It's all saved on there. So um, yes, if you'd like to see it, it is still there. Okay, there's actually like way too many for my eyes to even read right now. I think what I might do is, um, 
just do them more regularly in vlogs and stuff like that like answer questions and stuff like that because um i really love like you guys ask such wonderful questions and you say such wonderful things and i really like having conversations about um lots and lots of different things so i think that's what i will do um but yes for now i am going to make myself a cup of tea before i get too ready for bed and i might listen either to the pickwick papers for the rest of the night or maybe i'll listen more to np um because i was listening a lot to that today and i really want to keep listening because i'm loving it so okay yes see you tomorrow